Hi, I'm Brian Prince. Welcome to Bytes by MSDN. Today we have Yuval Lowy with us. Thanks for taking some time out at TechEd to visit with us. I know you're real busy here. You have uh, five, four sessions? Yeah, and a pre-con. Yeah, so it's a lot of work, I, I know. <laughs> so earlier we were talking about architects. You do a lot of, uh, you, you know, a leader in the architect community, I think, and uh, thinking like that. What do you, what's the role of an architect these days? That's, uh, that's a very interesting question, right? So I think the term, the architect is actually overloaded. It has actually evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. In the early years, you know, early 90s, people didn't even have the title architect, right? If you were to go back in time and corner a team and say, who's your architect? They're going to say, Archie what? Yeah. I mean, at most you had like a technical lead team. But I think through the 90s, um, the, the term has evolved, mostly because the term software engineer is already occupied by what are fundamentally just developers, right? But what the architect needs to do is apply hardcore engineering prin principles and practices to software systems. It turns out that software is a highly malleable entity. You can design it to be extended or be reused or highly specialized and be maintainable and somebody else to own it besides its original creator. These are all engineering questions, no different from the way a mechanical engineer designs a part or a civil engineer designs a bridge or somebody designs an airplane wing or an engine. Mm -hmm. And you can absolutely do the same things in building a software system, complying with similar engineering principles. And so uh, projects that do this kind of a thing prosper. Now, that's the one small definition. But if you think about it, architects today do far more than architecture. If you look at the time spent doing architecture, true architecture can only be done and cycles boundaries. When you're truly done with the system, you do the next system. So that happens every three to five years today when you're done with the system. And the boss is not going to give you more than a few weeks to work on it. I mean, if you're lucky, it's going to be three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. But the cycle is measured in years. So if the difference is weeks versus years, that's 52 to 1. Let's make it 50 to 1. You know, that's 2%. Yeah. So maybe you spend 3% of the time. So even if you spend 2% or 3% of your time on something, that's very misleading to call somebody an architect if only do is 3% architecture. So what do they do in the other 97% of the time? Well, that also has changed over the last 10 or 15 years. The role of the architect has evolved more than just be the technical lead or the architect. Today, they also have to take an active leadership role in process and uh, uh, in technology. The active leadership role in process means, at the end of the day, most managers don't really care about process. They just want to have the thing getting out the door. Just make it work. Just make it work. Code like hell. Here's a desk match. Let's do it, right? Yeah. Developers are spread too thin to actually care about process. So almost by elimination, the architect has to own the process. They have to take an active leadership role, making sure that all the key things required for success are actually done. The other thing is being a technical lead, but in a different way than what it was 15 or 20 years ago. 15, 20 years ago, a good technical lead showed developers uh, how to do something. Today, nobody needs help with how to do. They just go to a search engine. Bytes by MSDN, perhaps. M maybe, and <laughs> they type whatever they need, and they take the first hit, and they copy and paste. Oh, yeah. They don't really value what it means. They don't know what it is. And just, I call it voodoo programming. Copy, paste, you move on. Developers, in fact, have honed this skill of programming systems this way. Mm -hmm. Now. What developers desperately need help with is what to do. There's so many ways and options of doing pretty much anything today. So a good architect helps them with what to do, not necessarily with the how, the how they'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody owns all technical aspects of the product and the design aspect of the project and the process aspect of the project, that somebody is, for all intents and purposes, the technical manager of the project. You don't manage the developers uh, like a paper-pushing, pointy hair, dilbert style manager but you manage the technical aspect of the project. And that is the, the true uh, functionality of the architect today. Okay, so how, how do you become an architect? So that, that sounds like, you know, I, I might need some experience in my career, probably not fresh out of college will I be an architect. How do I, how do I become an architect? I have actually seen architects out of college, people that were blessed with built-in appreciation for good structure and aesthetics and elegance in software. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, hardly anybody would give somebody fresh out of college the opportunity to become an architect. Okay, right? fair enough, yeah. So I think it's kind of like if you have to ask the question, it's already too late, right? Because 
you have to be on the path. You have to actively manage your career. Nobody is going to take somebody who is employed as a developer and say, okay, now you are the architect. You have to do it before you get the title. You have to look for positions that are actively looking for an architect. If you think that you don't know everything and nobody does, right? Actively look an opportunity to study with somebody. Look for a master architect and become the apprentice for uh, two or three projects. A mentor, absolutely. Yeah. These are all proactive things you have to do to grow your own career and, and become a great architect. Yeah, so you're uh, planning on putting on a, a seminar or a conference specifically around... That's right. I have a seminar called the Architects Masterclass. It's a week-long class. It's very intense. I do it once or twice a year in California. The next one is in November. We talk about the core set of skills required of architects. Volumes have been written on architecture. Hardly anybody's talking about the skills of the architect. Simple things. How do you talk back to your manager? Yeah. How do you uh, make them do the right thing even if all they want to do is a waterfall sprinkled with a desk march? Yeah. How do you get developers to execute your design? How do you ensure they understand it and not going to butcher it? Uh, how do you know what are the right things to do regardless of technology? Right? And these are a set of skills that nobody teaches them at computer science schools, right? And so this is a week-long immersion in this uh, set of skills. Well, very good. Thanks for coming on the show and talking about architects. And, and I agree with you. I think we need to focus a lot more on teaching people these skills so that they can uh, uh, help out these products. So I'm Brian Prince. Thanks for watching Bytes by MSDN.